Hi peeps, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a minute since I uploaded. Um, got myself a little new toy here. And we're going to give the Hot Bodies D815 the rundown for 2016 season. I will probably still be keeping my Mugens. Uh, Mugens have been phenomenal all season long. Very successful with those cars, the Nitro and Electric. Um, but, um... If you know me personally, you know I get bored easy, and uh, I just like to try new shit whenever I can. So let's um, check out the box real quick, and we'll get in. We'll dig inside. So you can see this is the Hot Bodies or HPI D815 Ty Tessman Worlds Edition. A couple things have changed with this car. Just give you guys a heads up on what the box looks like, what what there is to see on the box. Alright, enough of that. Let's dig into this bad boy. Sure, I'm in the frame for you guys. Oh, the angels are singing. First thing you see is uh, your Proline Lexan wing. Looks like you just get one wing. I ran one of these wings earlier in the season, and um, I can't really say that it was good or bad. I didn't really. I didn't notice much of a difference, um, but, you know, you're probably going to want to replace it every three race days, four race days. They can get banged up a little bit easier than a, than a plastic wing. And even then, I was replacing my plastic wings fairly often just to keep the car looking good. Uh, next thing you're going to see right away is the Proline Type R body that comes with it. Not really sure if I like this body yet. Um... I do run it on my <clears throat> on my little car, my little hot bodies car, and it, it looks pretty good on this car. Um, so I don't know, maybe I like the way it looks on the eight scale, but I'm I'm more of a more of a big fan of the J Concepts uh, silencer body. This is the J Concepts silencer body. Just more my uh, my taste, I guess. Anyways. See what we can dig in here. Looks like you got some uh, nitro parts. Looks like there's a three shoe clutch in here. Looks like a uh, standard size clutch bell, so that's kind of nice. I can, you know, swap with my Mugen and Red's clutch bells. That that'll be nice. Really cool thing. A one piece engine mount included in the kit. Wow, I can't believe somebody finally did that. Oh, and not only that, it's a quick change motor mount, so that's even better. Good idea, good good um thought process behind that hot bodies. Gotta give you props to that. Um we'll see how the three shoe clutch works. I'm more of a fan of a four shoe clutch. You got shocks in here. Let's pull one of them out. See how these shock bodies look. Bag inside of a bag inside of a bag. They look pretty nice. They look polished up pretty good. Yeah, cool. Feel pretty smooth. Machining threads feel smooth. Can't say too much about them. 
Not without knowing much about the car. It looks like you get a whole bunch of pistons in here. Let's see what they give you for piston selection. Looks like you got a 8-hole 1.3, 5-hole, or no, 6-hole. 6-hole 1.3, 8-hole 1.3, and a 5-hole 1.4. And then you also have some blank pistons. That's kind of nice. Nice touch. Let's see what springs she comes with. And I read online, it uh, seems like the preferred piston is the yellow and I think blue. So, looks like you got yellows here. And in this bag, you have got blue. So, that's cool. One less thing to, you know, I'm sure you might want to stiffer spring for a higher bike track but um we'll see with how she runs uh stock for a minute obviously before we go nuts i've got all kinds of other springs i can always test on it rather than buying a bunch of hot body springs it's a fuel tank fuel tank looks nice um I can already tell you right now I'm going to remove that nipple and just go straight through with the fuel line. Um, just one less thing to worry about on race day. Uh, one thing that I would like to see more of these companies doing though is making this splash wall or splash guard a little bit taller. And um, I like that it's part molded as part of the tank. Um, some vehicles where they have it where you screw it on and I would prefer to have it molded, be part of the tank, be a little bit taller. And then also I would like it to have the, uh, like a overflow drain. So, you know, like the Kyosho tanks, they have a hole in, up here. If your pit man uh, overfills you, then it will run on the top of the tank. But there's also a hole in a tube that drains through the bottom of the chassis. So it's not just getting the inside or the guts of your car all goopy. Looks like you got all your tie rods, turnbuckles in here. Looks like you got lightweight uh, aluminum anodized balls. Uh, yep, they look like they're all lightweight, which is cool, just like the Mugen. It's a good touch, and one less upgrade you want to buy. Probably will swap out for the uh, Lunsford titanium turnbuckles. The uh, rod ends, they look pretty beefy. So they don't look like they're going to break easy or anything. Cool. And let's see. Got the, looks like A-arms. Gearbox. Front bumper. And looks like they include a 17 and a half. Uh spindles in there or carriers 17 and a half degree caster cool be cool if they included um the 15 and 20 degree ones <clears throat> but i'm pretty sure they're they're about 60 bucks for a pair of them so i can see why they don't include them but it'd be nice if they did uh, but if hey, 17 and a half seems to be the go-to one, then obviously it's nice to have the go-to ones included rather than need them. I think the 812 was a 15 degree that came stock, so they've added a little more caster with those. Lightweight spur gear. I'm going to try and get so you guys can see this. But when I saw this online, I thought the way they had it lightened up was pretty nicely pretty nicely done I like how they have it machined out in big openings here see that rather than just holes all the way around it so it almost looks like it might weigh less than what you might see in a low C or uh, you know some other vehicles but I I can guarantee that it weighs lighter without you know measuring it or weighing it so looks like you got all your diff stuff Nice touch, nice big bearings on the diffs, that's good. Looks like the Mugen bearings that I have uh, for my Mugen cars will work on these, so that's cool. 
Nice big beefy bearings. Looks like in here you've got the rear hubs. Looks like you got a larger wheel bearing. That's kind of nice. You got the hexes, the uh, wheel hexes, they seem to be lightened here. Haven't seen anybody do that yet. It's a nice touch. And you've got your uh, camber plates here for your rear hub, and you can buy different ones. I really like how they designed that rear hub with that carbon fiber like that because it gives you options. You don't need to go out and buy $60 or $80 rear hub or V5, V3, V4, whatever hubs, you can just buy the little carbon fiber plates that go on there and set yourself up. Rear arms, nice and solid. Um, I don't know if you can see in there, but they have a plastic insert that sits over the top and you can buy carbon fiber inserts in there to make them stiffer, even more stiffer than, uh, you know, for uh, high, higher bike conditions. Cool. Serrated wheel nuts. Um, I would like to see a uh, closed serrated wheel nut. Uh, seems like, I don't know, maybe it's just something that these companies are doing to cut corners here and there, but it would be nice if a, if a closed wheel nut was standard. But hey, as long as they're serrated, they'll stay on, so that's fine. Let's see what you got for fluids. Looks like for differentials, it's going to be 5,000 5, front, 3,000 3, center, 2,000 in the rear. And for shock fluid, looks like 500 front and rear. And what do we got here? Looks like steering Ackerman parts. Um, it's hard to tell, but I believe the... Yeah, the servo saver collar is in there. I would open this all this stuff up and show you guys, but I'm probably not going to sit down to build this thing for another month or so. So, but yeah, the nice thing is that um, the servo saver collar, you know, you thread it on to how you want it set, and then you can set it with a screw or clamp it down with a screw so then it's even less likely to move. Not that I had a problem with them moving, I always um, you know, clean the threads with some nitro cleaner uh, or engine degreaser and uh, some blue Loctite and, and it's solid. So. so you got the new radio tray in here redesigned from the 812 bigger uh, space to put your battery in nice little channel here for your to you run all your wires and you can see it's a really deep channel nice won't be worried about crunching wires everywhere plenty of room for your receiver uh, transponder etc all your wires servo wires and stuff Let's see what's in here center diff mount and the brakes Looks like you have a drilled disc and you have a, looks like semi-metallic pads, which is nice. The Mugen uses a brake pad like this and they uh, they always work great. You don't have to worry about brake fade or anything like that. So really cool. It looks like even the brake cam lever levers are uh, made out of aluminum, so they're nice and light. Cool. And then down to the chassis. We can open this guy up and show you guys the chassis. Now I believe this chassis is different than the 812. I'm not sure if they made him changes to the specific characteristics or the geometry of the chassis but I believe from what I've read online is really it's just the the holes aren't all in the exact same spot but I believe the chassis geometry is fairly the same so if you're looking to upgrade uh, an 812 to an 815 
It'd probably be cheaper to just buy an 815 and sell your 812. <laughs> Chassis looks good, black anodized. Kind of neat feet, uh, neat feature right here. You can put your, uh, you can put a steel skid plate in there, and replace that as needed as the chassis wears in, so you're not uh, replacing your chassis as often. Um, not sure if that's really something that I think is like, you know, necessary in today's buggies. I mean, to put a new chassis on a car is cheap, so. I mean, and then you put then you put a new you know a chassis wears and you put that new plate on there and then it's sticking out and you got to let it break in for it to smooth out. So I'm not sure if I'm a total you know fan for that. What do we got here? Did we already go through this bag? Yeah, that's just clutch stuff. And you got the manual and some stickers. Let's see what the the manual looks like. If it's anything like the D413 manual, I can tell you right now it could be better. The D413 manual was um, not terrible, but, you know, the, the Mugen manual, the Low C manual, the X-ray manuals, those manuals are great. Very uh, clear and easy to understand. A couple Proline stickers. Warranty stuff, hot body stickers. See how the manual is. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty much the same as the D four one three manual. At least uh, the way it's written out, but it doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's not my first, not my first rodeo, so I shouldn't have a problem building it. Let's see if they got a base set up in the back of the book. Yep, they do. A couple blank setup sheets. One blank setup sheet. Cool. Seems like pretty thin manual too. All right, not uh, not much else to show you guys until I get this thing uh, built up. Obviously, I'll keep you guys updated. Yeah, this chassis looks pretty good. It's pretty light, too. I think the Mugen chassis might be lighter. That Mugen car, um, everything about that car is high quality and uh, super light. It's it's just crazy. But I've been, uh, you know, kind of itching to try one of these cars, so figured I'd give it give it a go and if i like it i like it if i don't i'll sell it and try something else so very cool man another cool thing about this kit um let me see i got the bag right here in my hand is it comes with if i can get it to show you guys it comes with you probably can't tell on camera but this is an aluminum servo saver another nice touch that they do I mean 95% of the kits out there you gotta and they come with a plastic one and it's pretty much a given that you gotta buy the aluminum I mean if these manufacturers just include that stuff I mean I'll pay the extra few bucks for it to have it there than to you know have to outsource it from from somewhere else Oh. Yep. The shocks look nice though. The shocks look really nice. So I like how they uh let me pull it out. I like how they didn't thread them like all the way down to here because you're never going to use the threading all the way down here once you get the collar and spring and everything on. So it's nice that it's not threaded all the way down here. So that's just smooth. And it's also a weight savings because you don't have that added material here for threading. Yeah, they look, uh, 
they look like pretty good shocks, man. They they look eerily similar to a Kyosho shock, the body at least. I know their old caps were pretty much the same as Kyosho caps. Now they've got their they've got a new high volume shock cap, with the bleeder screw on it, and the uh bellow bladders let me see if i can find one and pull it out for you so these uh bellow bladders are supposed to be a little bit more consistent i suppose i don't know and you can see how they got little ribs in there So yeah, they feel like a really nice bladder. Yep. Feel good. Oh, I wanted to check these out. Yep. Very cool. And I was curious about how their shock boots were. When I saw a picture of them online, yeah, that's cool. They're they're like the low C or or maybe the Losi is like the hot bodies after the Losi came out with their new boots, but you can see that they don't they don't go over the shock eyelet. They stop above that and they're and it's got like a a fair amount of rubber here at the bottom to kind of keep it secured. And it's tighter at the bottom, keep that bottom part secured. <clears throat> so pretty cool. I like when they uh do stuff like that. Now, I seen online Ty Tessman, he was using um, <clears throat> mud guards on his that were similar to the uh, D413, but they were on the 8 scale. So I don't know if that's. <clears throat> they must be an option part because I'm not seeing them in here. I'm not seeing them anywhere in the shock shock packaging. So, yeah, they used to have, well, not used to, but uh, Ty's car, he's got the, uh, these little shock mud guards on his 8 scale. But they're bigger for 8 scale. They need to be bigger for that bigger spring. So, they must be uh, an add-on or an or, uh, optional part. So... Not necessarily needed. So that's it. Hopefully uh, we can get this puppy built up here uh, soon. And uh, I'll give you guys a nice overview of the entire car. And show you guys how it kind of is built. I can get the box to close. I need this box to close. Because it ain't going to stay in here like that. Cool. Anyways, guys, that's the Hot Bodies D815. And uh, I'm making a mess now. So, uh, if you already got one, you got any tips for uh, me for my build, go ahead and leave a comment below in the uh, comment section. And, uh, if you got questions about it, I'll try to help you the best I can. Now, obviously, I'm new to this car, so but um, we'll uh, hopefully she'll be a good car. She seems like she's a runner, so uh, we'll see. I think uh, I think I'm gonna be happy with it, so we'll see. All right, guys, thanks for watching.